Welcome back. Our top story of the day, the 10 American sailors who were being held in Iran have been set free. Joining us right now is former U.S. Attorney General under President George W. Bush, John Ashcroft. Sarah, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> well, good morning. It's great to be with you. Your reaction to what went on overnight uh, with Iran holding our 10 sailors? Well, I think we really need to hear from, this, uh, from our military people as to what the situation was when they were taken. Um, if it were some kind of accident that's attributable to our own conduct, the prompt release is, is to be considered invaluable. If this was some sort of uh, test of the United States, uh, including a wrongful taking of our sailors, uh, by a hostile nation and a state sponsor of terrorism like Iran is, uh, I think we should act with a significant uh, understanding of the seriousness of that, and there should be consequences associated with it. Uh, but uh, we need to find out from our own uh, armed forces exactly what happened here. It, it, uh, it stunned me that the president didn't mention this at all in his State of the Union message last night when he was, in some respects, touting the United States' strength and how we were so well respected around the world. And then 10 of our, our, our armed forces were taken by a, a country which has been hostile to the United States and is a state sponsor of terror. And when the president hides from issues like that, I, I, I don't think that reflects the kind of leadership that I would expect. What, what, what did you think of the State of the Union address? I think the president was at his best in, uh, in campaign form. Uh, he uh, used all the kind of rhetoric that you would expect in a campaign. He selectively, he confessed things that were undeniable. In fact, Washington is divided, and it's partly my fault. But he did not confess what I think is even more important, that America is divided, and it's, and it's, it's a division that he has exacerbated and aggravated every chance he's had the chance to do so um, in effort to have political gain and to divide people in order to have your way in politics instead of to unify people in the national interest is one of the things that I, I really I, I, it disappoints me. I would like a president who would unify us and when there are problems who would seek to be a healer instead of a divider and he didn't mention that of course. And he didn't mention the fact that, well, he did mention that there is a statistic that indicates that the United States might be doing well economically. The unemployment is down to a low rate, but he didn't mention the fact that we have the fewest people seeking to work now than we have in the last 38 years, that the, the, the uh, about 62 percent of the public who really want to be a part of the workforce as opposed to much higher levels in the past. People have given up on work because they're addicted to uh, other means of governmental support in many cases. Uh, so I, I think we had a selective um, campaign type uh, projection and he's saying to the American people, this is sort of my aspiration, this is what I campaigned on. The problem is that he's got seven years of history bragging about the health care system when a lot of people are really in trouble because their health care costs have gone up and they can't get the doctors they once had and the people to attend their health needs that they choose, that's difficult. But he was in top campaign form last night in, in sense saying, look, this is what I've done. I want a good legacy. You should be thanking me for all these things. Uh, frankly, uh, I think we uh, are going to have a more candid debate in the election about what the condition of America is and and we'll have an opportunity for new leadership and I hope they'll be more willing to confront reality simply than simply campaign rhetoric. And, and we'll hear that tomorrow night, Dagan. That's right. So Dagan far, yeah, Attorney General, so far who has stood out in terms of countering of what the president's been saying. Well, the president's essentially, to your point, is trying to convince the American people will spend the rest of this year trying to con the American people into believing that the country is better off than we all know it to be. But in terms of the candidates, who stands out for you at this point? Well, there's unanimity among our candidates in terms of understanding that there are real problems. That, you know, and, and this idea that America is so well respected around the world at the same time we have people being taken on the high seas. I mean, there is a, a disconnect. There's a, a cognitive dissonance. There's this uh, 
uh, tension between the reality of where we are and what this president is asking us to do. And fortunately for Republican candidates, they have a chance to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not just a selective uh, set of facts which uh, might lead people, uh, if, if they didn't know the truth, uh, to, to a different conclusion. And, and I think virtually all of our candidates understand that America is at a very difficult time. The American people understand. They feel an insecurity about where we are. This idea, for example, that we have to respect religions that even have at, the, at their core, I'm not talking about the Muslim religion generally, but components of religion yeah. whose article of faith is that they must kill us and they must exterminate innocent people, we don't respect those, those religions. You can't respect a religion that doesn't believe in freedom of religion or whose religion it is to kill innocent people and to whitewash things by saying, oh, we all respect everybody. It's one big lovable family and, and there are no bad people in the world refusing to call a terrorist a terrorist. That's not going to get us yeah. where we need to be. And Republican candidates understand that difference. Mr. Attorney General, good to have you on the show today. Thanks so much. Hope you'll come back soon. Yeah, my honor to be with you. Thanks a lot.